Hello, my name is Mayra Hernandez, and I am the Mainer ISD Mentor Mainer Coordinator. And with me is my colleague, Sandro Aguilar, and we will be presenting on our school-based mentoring program and how we plan on continuing to support our students and our mentors during COVID-19. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me and my contact information is at the end of this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Maya, for that quick introduction. In this presentation, we're gonna go over a few things, one being our philosophy and our program here at Mentor Maynard. We're gonna dive into the demographics of our community here at Maynard, Texas. We're gonna go into the role of what it means to be a mentor, but more importantly, the impact it has in our students here in our community. And then with everything going on in COVID, there's been a few logistical changes that occur. We wanna discuss those with you all. And then last but not least, we'll end our presentation with the specific steps it takes to become a mentor. So what is our philosophy? With Mentor Mainer, our mission is to support our kids, our students, our children with positive role models through a safe and nurturing environment and with innovative, relational, and empowering school-based mentoring. Who are the students that are in our program? We take students anywhere from second grade through 12th grade, students that are not high risk, and the students want to be in the program. They are not mandated. We're a very small community here in Mainer. Uh, we, with nearly about 10,000 students in total in our entire community, ranging from elementary, middle school, all the way up to high school. One st a number that we want to point out is that about 77% of our students here in Maynard come from low economic status families. And we want to point that out to emphasize that there is a strong need, a high need here to, her to serve our community, to serve our families. And that's why it's important that we go out and recruit such a diverse and you know, well-rounded group of mentors to help you know, our students you know, progress in all their decision-making and in life. So what is a mentor? What would you be doing as a mentor with Mentor Mainer? Let's start off with what a mentor is not. A mentor is not a teacher. You're not supposed to take the role of a teacher, a psychiatrist, or even a parent. And most importantly, you're not going to be an ATM machine. What you are gonna be is a caring adult, a positive role model, and you're gonna be this student's best friend, this student's friend, somebody that they look up to. You're gonna be an advocate, and you are gonna look out for the best interests of this child. So when we look at the research on the impact of mentoring, we looked at what the National Mentoring Partnership says, and they said that mentoring assures children that they are not alone in dealing with their day-to-day -day challenges. More specifically, the research shows that students who meet regularly with their mentors are 52% less likely than their peers to skip a day in school. In addition, to that better attendance, mentored youth maintain better attitudes towards school. So we did some of our own research with kids involved in Mentor Mainer, and we discovered through you know, surveys and research that 97% of our students in Mentor Mainer believe that their mentors care about them. 94% of our students say that mentors made, uh, that made them more confident in themselves, and 92% of our students said that having a mentor caused them to care more about coming to school every day, which speaks to the research that was found nationally about students having a better attitude and also better school attendance than youth that were not mentored. So when our school district decided that, you know, to suspend any like volunteers to be coming on campus on a daily basis, just to keep at the forefront the health and the, the safety concern of our students and our staff, we decided to go a different route this year and use, we ended up purchasing the Go Mentor software. We did it with the intentions of safety and it being a structured environment, we felt that this was the best resource available out there for us. It is a text messaging platform. Um, with that being said, we as staff members here in Maynard ISD, with, uh, between Myra and myself, we're collecting all the cell phone numbers from both the staff members uh, and the volunteers that are participating. But more importantly, we're calling individually every single parent to make sure we receive their verbal consent, we explain to them the program, and we make them understand that at the end of the day, there will be no you know, personal cell phone numbers in exchange with one another, but more so we collect, we enter into the system, and then the Go Mentor server system goes out and sends out an anonymous text message um, that, that starts the conversation and welcomes 
uh, the mentor and the mentee into the program. One thing that we want to point out about this uh, software is that once you receive this text message, everything that is documented and said is kept in their Go Mentor Servers text archive. And so therefore, if a parent ever had a question, um, they have all the, uh, they're more than happy to share that with them. But also, you know, for your database and your reporting, that information is there saved and documented as well. A couple logistics that we wanted to point out um, in, the, in the age of COVID with the new changes, the system, the Go Mentor text message platform will only be between Monday and Friday from 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. So if a student does reach out over the weekend, that uh, message will not be received until Monday morning at 8 a.m. The other logistic is that, you know, at every single campus, you all have a specific point of contact, whether that may be a CIS employee or a staff counselor member, um, but between them and ourselves here at the Mentor Mentor staff at the Partnership and Wellness Department, we are more than happy to reach out or answer any questions that you all may have and just help fill in any single, you know, logistical or, you know, comparison going on within uh, your mentor and your mentee communication. The other thing that we want to point out is that we highly recommend that you guys coordinate with one another one time a week that you can consistently communicate with each other. For some kids, that might be during lunchtime. For others, that might be that may not be until after school at 3.30, p.m. Uh, time frame. But whatever time frame that works, once you all receive that welcome text, again, we highly recommend you all coordinate with each other the best time that fits for both. And then the other question that we've been receiving quite a bit is whether or not we'll ever, you know, during this uh, remote learning, incorporate a video platform component. And the answer to that is we are trying really hard to add that into the spring semester. However, for the time being, for the rest of this fall semester in November uh, launch day and also December, we will simply be staying to a text messaging platform, but with the intention of definitely adding a uh, video component, but more importantly, returning back to how we have always done in the years past. Perfect. And so then to continue with uh, what Mr. Aguilar was talking about, when he mentioned CIS, he's referring to communities and schools. Those are folks that assist us with, uh, with mentor concerns. Um, and so also, you know, just to add to that, what is the commitment? We ask that you commit for an entire school year and this is off COVID, during COVID, we ask that you please commit to an entire school year with the hope that you will continue following the same student every school year until graduation. Um, we ask that you are consistent, that if you're going to be texting your mentee on Tuesday during lunch, continue that pattern. If you're not able to, please communicate that to us so that we can you know, communicate, get in contact with your mentee and let them know, hey, your mentor's not able to text you, but they will be reaching out to you the following week, right? We want that communication. That is very important for our students. Um, another thing is that we will be providing ongoing training and we're also gonna be communicating with you all on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. This will either be through emails, through, through phone calls, through text messaging, or through newsletters, where we will provide further tips on how to enhance that communication, whether it is through texting, through a phone call, or through those video opportunities in the spring semester. Our trainings consist of how to support children during COVID, or the impact of mental health that COVID has caused, what is trauma caused with children and how can you support children that have been traumatized? Um, how to support your mentee if they disclose that, you know, that they're going through some issues or LGBTQ, um, how to support mentees during the holiday stressors, different things like that. They're all going to be provided through Zoom for the safety of everyone. So if you're not able to attend, we will send you that link so that you can watch these videos at your own time. Um, first time visits. Just like we do in a normal school year, once I get all of the schedules of all of the kiddos that are in-person learning and virtual learning, we will provide an email with the name of the point of contact, contact information, and I will also provide to you your mentee's information. If it's the same mentee, you will still get that information as well as their lunchtime or after school time so that you know when you can text them. If it's lunchtime, it'll say from 12 to 12.30, or this student arrives home like at four o'clock, so you have between four and five to text them. So you will get an email with that information. If you've never met your mentee, I will coordinate a meeting through Zoom 
so that you can meet your mentee face to face. And that way, when you text them for the first time, it won't feel awkward. And again, we will provide tips on how to further enhance this relationship through COVID, through texting. Best practices. One of the things that I want to remind all of you is confidentiality. It is very important that you let your mentee know that whatever you and she or you and he talk about or text, it is going to be confidential, meaning you're not going to go tell your husband, your wife, your colleagues about what you talked about with your mentee. However, if they do report any signs of abuse or anybody they know that's getting abused, you have to let them know that by law, you're mandated to report that. If you're on campus, that would be to the administrator counselor, principal, and to me or Mr. Aguilar or anybody in our partnerships and wellness department. Um, but now if it's through texting, you would still communicate that to us. And by law, since you're the first person that received that information, you have to report that to Child Protective Services, CPS. But we are here to support you. If at any time you have any concerns about your mentee, anything that your mentee mentions to you in that text that raises a red flag, that tells you, you know what, I don't know about this, I'm worried about this, please give me a call, my cell phone number, my email is in this presentation. So those are the best practices. Um, if your mentee does not text you back, give it 24 hours. If you text again and they don't respond, please let me know immediately. Do not wait a week, do not wait a month. Communication is very important in order for this to, to work and in order for that relationship to function, right? Lastly, I want to end with a lot of our mentors or mentees may not feel so good about texting and they may be wondering, is this even going to be effective? Like, how is this even going to help my mentee? It's just a text message. I want you to think back about a time when you were feeling really down or perhaps you were getting ready to go through a surgery or something major in your life. What, what did it feel like to receive that text message? You got that phone call. You got that message that said, I'm thinking about you. I hope that you're doing well. How did that make you feel? Exactly. That's what we want our students to know, that we are still thinking about them, that we are here no matter what, even if COVID is happening, we care about them and we're thinking about them. So for now, we're going to be using the text messaging. And in January, we will continue with the video opportunities if that's possible. But the main thing is we are still here. Even if COVID is here, we are still here supporting them and thinking about them. And so after viewing this video, if you say, you know what, I want to become a mentor during COVID, or you know what, I, I'm still planning on continuing being a mentor, this is a good refresher for you on what Mentor Mainer is, as well as this is a good a training review or a training opportunity if you want to become a mentor. Reach out to me. My email address is here. My cell phone number is here. Send me an email. Send me a text. If you want to become a mentor, I'll send you all the information you need, like the background check link the application, the mentor manual to keep handy as a review of what it means to be a mentor and our and all of our, you know, policies and things that are needed. Um, we also provided a link to this video on our regular Mentor Mainer video. We do one every year as a reminder of what it looks like to become a mentor. Feel free to watch that on your free time. And if you have any questions, concerns, that's what we're here for. Give us a call, shoot us an email, and we'd be happy to help and continue supporting all of our mentors and our mentees through COVID. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to the opportunity to collaborate. Thank you again. Appreciate it.